Welcome back. In the last video, we created the view model side, adding new rows and columns to a spreadsheet. Now that the view model portion is done, we want to set up the view to properly implement that functionality. In this video, we will address the view portion of that functionality. Let's open up our main HTML file. The first thing we will add is a table head section with a single row. Notice that we're not using a for each binding on the row. Now, we'll add two header cells. The first is an empty one to represent an empty corner cell. The last one contains a button to add a new column. Next, we'll add the actual columns in the spreadsheet. This is where we introduce containerless binding. Containerless bindings create a virtual DOM element that allow bindings without creating a separate element. This is most often used with a for each binding, but can be used with any control flow binding, such as an if and a with as well. There are a variety of cases where a containerless binding is appropriate. The most common is when you need to insert a leading or trailing row, column, or list item. In our case, we are inserting an empty corner th element. If the for each binding was put on the tr, Instead of the containerless binding, we could repeat the th cell for each column. There is simply no way to implement the desired functionality in Knockout without containerless binding. To use containerless binding, we actually add a pair of HTML comment. The first starts with the space, then ko, then another space, then the binding itself. The second comment contains slash ko, which closes the virtual element. In this case, we have a virtual container for our for each binding. Now we can loop through each column name and render that in a th cell. Since column names is an observable array of string and not objects with a property, we use dollar sign $data to reference the current item itself. Now, We'll add the table body tag back and replace the for each binding with a virtual binding. Here, we're also introducing a more advanced form of the for each binding. The for each binding can take an object with options for the binding using the data field to indicate what should be iterated over, as well as an optional as field to indicate the name this variable should be given. We will see this in action shortly. One thing to note is that for an as field, a string indicating the name of the variable is expected. Ensure that you are passing a string value. The first thing when updating the table row is to add in the row number cell and an empty cell corresponding to the cell containing the add column button in the header. In the row number cell, you'll notice that I'm using the special context variable $index. Dollar sign $index is an observable that is available inside a for each loop. It gives you the current index of the loop. Since index is zero based, we want to add one. We have parentheses after dollar sign $index because it is an observable. Now we add the actual cell contents. We use another containerless for each binding. This time we use row dot cells as the data. Remember when we used the as binding above? We can now refer to the current data element as row, which makes it clear what you are referring to. Here again, we can use an as field to store the value as cell. In the table column, we have an input field with its value bound to cell dot value. Finally, we add a button at the bottom of the container to add new rows. Now we run the application. First, we create a new spreadsheet. Then, we click Add Row and see that a new row has been added. Now click Add Column and notice that a new column has also been added. You've now seen some more advanced features of knockout bindings, such as containerless bindings, as well as some advanced extras with the for each binding. In the next section, we will cover some more advanced techniques to use with Knockout.js.